Just a quick reminder that if you want to support Concepts and Legends, please remember to like and subscribe. And you can also show your support by using our TCG affiliate link for any and all of your magic needs by using the link you see here or below in the description. Any and all help is greatly appreciated and helps us bring you more videos like the one that is starting right now. Queen Couture and fantasy art may seem like an unlikely pair at first glance, but they are closely related. And who better to explain this than today's interview subject, artist Sarah Winters, who represents both in her 45 and counting catalog of MTG art. Let's see what she has to say. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to talk to me today. Hey, how's it going? It's nice it's to good. meet you. Nice to meet you too. It's, um, it's interesting. Uh, what I found out about you is that your roots are in fashion. Is that not true? It is very true. So when I was in high school, I studied fashion at the college that I went to on the weekends, fashion design. And then I kind of decided that I didn't really want to construct clothing. And I also wanted to do like the really exciting couture. That's not really where most people go in the industry, right? People end up designing swimsuits or like department stores. And that's not exciting for me. But concept art, you can design clothing that's fantastical and insane with the silhouettes. And it's kind of the best of both worlds. That's interesting. I, I always would assume that people would go for couture because it's sort of like what I imagine fashion to be. But I guess that makes sense. Most of the industry is stuff you're not necessarily like bringing flash to it. It's a exactly. And I mean, the couture, there's just not like much of a market for it. It's almost like fine art. Yeah. Right. It's just it's trend based. It's hard to get into. It's it's not like a career. That right. you can it's like being it, it's like wanting to be a pro NFL player or something. Right. A very slim chance that you're going to actually make a career. Exactly. Out of it. It's not exactly. it's not it's not stable. So when you when you switched over um, to to doing uh, characters, uh, was that a difficult transition or was art always something that you were able to do? I mean, I know you would be able to do it from a design standpoint, but getting down uh, the ability to do faces and, and expressions. Was that something you had also was able to do or able to do? Uh, I suppose, you know, it really did heart start when I was in high school because I always loved video games. I played a lot of Diablo and I would draw the characters from like Warcraft from the manuals. And um, so I had this part of me that was very illustration based. And then I had another part of me that was fashion based and I wasn't sure what to do. So at the last minute, I switched into an illustration major, but it was out of fashion school. And um, the fa okay, so the illustration was that that was at the Fashion Institute, right? Yes. And I'm so, going to be honest, it was a less expensive school to go to. And was it, did you get from it what you wanted to get? I did. Yeah. Good. Like, I feel like that's a lot of times with uh, colleges, you know, I, I personally, from my experience, you know, you, you're going to get, I mean, unless you, you know, get into like Yale or something like that, where it's like all about connections, don't really spend too much money on it. You know what I'm saying? No, and honestly, I probably wouldn't go to college if I had to go over again, right? Because there's so many programs that, and there's so much schooling on the internet now. The only tough thing is like, how do you get into the right direction? Right, right. How do you know what to study, right? And what brought, and what do you think brought you towards, like you played the video games, is that what brought you towards uh, being involved with magic and fantasy? You know, oddly enough, uh, 2012 I was I was getting into concept art like I wanted to be a concept artist for video games and I met my husband and he's like oh I just got this you know new gig doing magic the gathering cards I'm like I don't know what that is really and then I discovered it I'm like oh this is this is like me this is I feel like this is my aesthetic it's edgy, like a character based. I loved it. So I really just gravitated towards magic quite a bit. Do you, that's surprising that you were so into um, like uh, sci-fi when you were younger, but you, th that you and magic hadn't crossed paths somewhere along the line. I mean, I've heard of Magic the Gathering. I just didn't really, I think I've seen Liliana before, maybe like that scene you know, that I recognize that character, but I didn't know anything about it. Right. She's fabulous, isn't she? She's my favorite. My daughter's named Liliana. I was going to ask about that. You have, yeah, you have Liliana and Olivia, right? Yes. Is, so, she, um, is she named after Olivia Voldaren? Not intentionally, but I'm <laughs> glad it happened because I love Olivia Voldaren. Yeah, it's like, I saw that. I was like, those, I mean, they're really pretty names. You know what I mean? Like just mm -hmm. 
they're just lovely names. It's a classic, uh, right? Yeah, it right. Fit into, I wanted something that's classic and fit into fantasy in a way. Like there's yeah. just a type of name in fantasy that I think is really beautiful. It could be steampunk. It could be Victorian. It could be uh, just regular every day. It works. It's good names. Okay. So the next question would be, so you then said in an interview, and I found this interesting, uh, you said that you were not ready to submit your stuff to art directors, but you did anyway. And it led to you getting a job. Now, how do you think about that now in retrospect? Like you say you weren't ready, but it seems like in a way you kind of were. How do you feel about that? So, I mean, I wasn't ready to get work, but I think I was ready to be on the radar of art directors at that point, right? So I can start getting constructive feedback so I can make that next jump to getting work. But, you know, if I were to say submit my work from high school, they wouldn't know what to do with it. They wouldn't know how to give me feedback, right? But I had just enough that I had a cohesive portfolio that was fantasy directed that I can start getting feedback on. What was your first magic card? I think it was a beast token for Kaladesh and there was like an elven artificer, something like that. I don't remember the names, which is funny because I always thought I would remember each name, but I've done so many cards now that I have no idea what the name is. It's a good problem to have. Yes. Um, so the thing that I really, I do, I do find it curious about it, your art is um, how much of your uh, fashion abilities get to be put into the, uh, the characters you are drawing? So, I mean, honestly, a lot because so the art directors at WOTC, they hire me specifically, I would say most of the time, because I can design costuming. So they'll give me characters that aren't designed yet. And I can kind of just figure that out. Are there characters that you can name off that you have helped bring the dress to that wouldn't be, I don't know what they're, you know, it's very lock and key there, but I figure in retrospect, there might be a way to, to discuss it. Is there any way you do that? I mean, the most recent character that was released was Nico Aris. Right. And mm -hmm. you helped design him. So tell me how, how does a, a, a character, a planeswalker like Nico Aris, I mean, what is the process that leads to their creation and how do you get involved with that? Well, so I was hired specifically to help design the visuals for Nico Eris. And, you know, they are Magic's first, like, not first non-binary character because there's Ashiok, right? But like, mm -hmm. Nico is just, we really wanted to bring a sensitivity to this character because they are so important to, you know, society and Magic in general. And also just like, Nico is a cool person. Right. Like we wanted to show that like Nico is like rebellious and like this personality through costuming, too. And I thought that was really cool. So I was hired because I've done a lot of character work for um, the team I was working on at that point. Like I helped redesign Soren's costuming a little bit. And let's see who else. Fraley's I redesigned. Really? Yeah. And how how would you when you read say redesigned like give can you give me an example of how you changed say Soren's outfit from what it was to what you made it now? So Soren mostly I modified the boots and made his costuming work a little bit better. And Frey Elise was more of a full body redesign. Now, when you say like to to plebeians like me, costuming full body design, what what does that mean? So let's see, um, Frey Elise used to have this kind of cape that she wore and she didn't have like a like a shape language she was mostly just made out of leaves so I made her have like a more iconic like actual outfit that you can kind of read from far away if that makes sense mm -hmm. whereas like um, the original art it was mostly just leaves layered on top of each other right okay and then so with boots and costuming for Soren how how did how what does that mean like I, I mean I understand changing boots but why the, why the specificity, I guess? And well, so, you know, Magic the Gathering is making video games now and, you know, they're, they're staying out of the, they're going in different avenues than just the cards right now. So, okay. you know, the, the shoulder armor has to work. It has to be able I to see. move that type of thing. I gotcha. So you made him more like able to be a uh, uh, fluid, not fluid, um, uh, he moves like he's, Exactly. Uh, 
that's interesting. That's so interesting because, you know, that, now you mentioned it, you could have a really cool outfit but it, that's in a still frame, but when it's moving, it's going to look ridiculous or it's not going to work. Exactly. Wow. See, now that's the kind of stuff that I find interesting. And, and so back to Nico. So uh, how many people work on him together with you? Is it like a l- large group of people? Well, so with Nico, we had writers, game designers, creative directors, like there was a, a good amount of people working on Nico. And, you know, like I helped with the visual part, but, you know, there's a whole personality that you have to come up with too. Right. And we had, you know, a good team of people, an amazing team of people working on Nico. So do they come with the personality? Obviously, they probably come with his backstory and his personality already established. And then I'd imagine they hand it off to you or how does that work? So let's see, uh, for this particular like push, um, you know, we had, we kind of jumped into it really fast together and we're like back and forth with the narrative and designers. And, um, you know, I came up with a design based on like an archetype of like this rebellious, awesome um, character who's kind of like, I was thinking about like motorcycle outfits and that type of thing to you. Okay. And so, you know, I presented sketches and then we refined from there. And so that's, it's interesting. So um, motorcycle, I can see that maybe like sort of like a little bit of the um, 1950s greaser influence, but it mixed with uh, ancient uh, Greek outfits. Exactly. And, you know, that was kind of like a difficult balance to have a little bit of Theros in there without, um, that type of costume take over the whole character. Was there anything that you designed that was that was left out in the end that you came in and felt was good or any major changes? No, I mean, I'm actually really happy with the design. So, uh, and a couple other artists tweaked a little bit of the design after I left, you know, changing the collar, which I think is a wonderful update. And then mm-hmm. also like adding a little bit more detail too because of time constraints, right? And I, I'm really happy with what they did to the design because it's a team effort. Yeah, it, it seems like it very, it very much is. And so when do you get to, uh, when is the official, like how do they officially des- decide, okay, this is, we're, we're, we're good, everything's happy. And, and then when, when do, I mean, is, when does that happen in the process of it? Well, I think it's different for every character and, you know, every card too. And, and you know, after I presented my visuals, my work there was done, right? The team took that and, you know, they refined and refined and made sure that the character was exactly what they wanted and, um, you know, lots of testing. And of course, you know, coming up with the name, I didn't have anything to do with that, right? So, you know, they took it from there. Have you ever contributed to coming up with names along the line, along the way? I don't think I'm good at that. And no, I have not. But, I was going to uh, say, I don't know if you're bad at it. I, mean, I, I don't know. I guess I haven't tried it out. I might be good at it. I don't know. Um, so what, as far as what made you decide for Rowan's Battle Guard? Um, that was the first one you did that was a traditional painting. What mm-hmm. made you decide that was going to be the one? Oh, gosh. Honestly, like, so... <laughs> I I ended up being too ambitious. And what happened is I had a baby and then I got really bored and I'm like, I'll take a magic card, but I'm going to paint it and it's going to be huge. Oh no. A little bit too much of an undertaking. I'm like, but I don't have childcare. That's fine too. Like I'll just paint when she sleeps on the floor. It's cool. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, it ended up being a really great experience, but it was like a lot of work because, you know, to get that kind of detail and fidelity and oil paint is much more time consuming and a whole different process than digital. Was it, I mean, it was it something that you are happy with though in the end? I am happy with that piece, but it took um, a lot to get there. I was going to say like, I mean, that definitely, that sounds like, and the only reason I know this is my sister recently, you know, recently had a baby and, and knowing how much work that that is. And then, and then throwing a magic card, I was like, that's, uh, that was a lot. Oh yeah, um, but I, I don't regret doing it. No, I mean everybody's everybody's healthy, everybody's good. Nobody nobody's head flew off in the making. It's it, uh, that's great. Um, yeah. So with your stuff, I like I like the fact that you are very keen on 
uh, leaving uh, the names of the models that you use in the pieces. I just, I like that. Just as somebody who has a, a base in photography, I like the fact that I can try to do a, a little bit of a backtrack. And I interviewed Jonathan, who have modeled, or he's right behind me, actually. Um, how do you find models? What is a good model? How, how do you determine that? So, I mean, it really depends on what I'm going for in the piece. And, you know, if the character needs like a really movement driven magic spell where they're like moving a lot, I might hire a dancer for that because they okay. might have to move, you know, like, so it really just depends on what I'm going for. For example, the model I hired for Nico Eris, not just, first of all, they're a fantastic person, but they're also a dancer and, you know, they had the right kind of, um, kind of face and also they really um, identified with the character too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was just kind of like a, a great, uh, a bunch of stuff coming together that was wonderful. So but you, they also know how to move and, and express themselves and move their face. It's actually really difficult. Right. I mean, it's true. Like, I, I mean, can't move my hands, right? Like I have hands that bend backwards. Like I have a hard time being a hand model so I end up taking my husband's hands usually for. Interesting. Cards. So when you like you, you just did it right now, the the way you. Um... I tend to make a claw hand, and it doesn't really look appealing in a painting, right? Right. Like there's a lot of these things that you have to think about. That's interesting. Are there any other things you can think of, like what 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 doesn't look good in a painting? That is an example, like you gave another another tidbit. Doesn't look good on a painting. I guess, you know, photo reference is really important to making a, a painting as realistic as I make, but at the same time, you don't want to copy the painting because, you know, uh, copy the photo because then right. that's the point, right? Like mm -hmm. you want to idealize and leave out information and change information. So a lot of the time I'll kind of Frankenstein together different reference images to kind of get everything right. And you've modeled for quite a few cards too, haven't you? I have quite and a do, bit. And do you think that that has influenced how you pick out models and how you know how to, to, to ask, ask who to do what? Yeah, I mean, so Kieran Yonner and I have worked together a lot on just models and painting in general. And at Kieran's old coffee shop slash like art school, uh, we used to have figure drawing. So we hired a lot of models. So I have a... Um, pretty robust list of local Seattle models that me and a few other illustrators use. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have a good reputation with and they kind of like get us. So but we also have kind of a reference library that we borrow from, like Kieran has a bunch of armor that I might borrow and fabrics and, you know, we'll set up these pretty big like sets almost where we have lots of reference and all the right weapons. And it's pretty fun, actually. Are there any photos of that set room? I'd love to see that. Well, so Kieran has some of that on his Twitter. Um, you'd have to look for it. He did this one cabal piece where I was like kind of the cabal. The uh, whisper, whisper daddy. blood liturgist? Yes, somewhere on the internet is that photo reference. And it's pretty fun. It's that's great. I mean, honestly, I had I, it wasn't until I um I really looked at it. I was like, oh, yeah, that is her because it's I mean, it's hard to recognize somebody with a with a shaved head. Yeah. But um, you have a very nice shaped head in the in the oh, painting. Thank you. Yes. And you said in, in Twitter, which I like is you're like, if it just replaced it with chihuahuas, it actually would be me. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah have I, I have. Many dogs. I, um, I, I'm surprised you haven't heard one barking. Uh, I have four of them. I have three Shih Tzus and a Chihuahua. Oh boy! So you get it, like the constant I, barking. Uh huh. Oh yeah. I mean, I can't. Do you tell ever you get how like I, the howl, like when they all come together and howl? Oh, it's the worst. It happened during my interview with Magali, and it was just like, mm. I had to. That's why I had to switch to this headset because I can't do an open mic because they'll just oh. like they start thinking that I'm playing because I'm talking to somebody because I've been quiet for a while. Now I'm talking. All of a sudden, they're oh, like. <laughs> and my right now my one's begging to be picked up and I'm just Aww. ignoring her. <laughs> yeah, no, she's 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 fine. She's good. So you your wizard token, you said that that was the one that you are like the most proud of because you had something in mind and you achieved it. Um oh yeah. How how does that how did how do you um 
qualify or quantify taking it from your brain to the page and what made that one work as opposed to some other ones? So I, I think a lot of things, you know, I hired the right model. I love working with that model. Also the same model that I used for Nico Eris. I was going to say. And they were a dancer, so they know how to move and pose and express. And that makes a huge difference. And at the same time, I got the lighting right. So it was like a hot summer day. Um, you know, I had fan set up on the model and, you know, the lighting was perfect, exactly how I imagined it in my head, like this kind of dramatic, like three quarter sun lighting. And, um, you know, the costuming was just right. Like we, um, we took photos of the cape, like, you know, we take fabric and you just kind of swish it around like this and keep taking photos. Like everything just came together. And a lot of that is because I took the right reference and I kept the composition really simple and focused on the character. Interesting. Um, do you have any photos of the Aid the Fallen shoot? Because from what that sounds like on online, that sounds like that was quite a uh, quite an experience. Uh, that was a tough one, honestly, because I was like a thousand months pregnant, so I was trying to stand on a couch and make sure I didn't fall down and like shoot from above. And um, that one, I didn't have the lighting right. It was just, it wasn't like my goals for how I want to make a piece, right? I really want to stage it, but like. I think I was in town for like just a couple days and I really needed to get like some shots and, you know, it, it was what it was. It was still a good experience at the same time. I would be interested to see the photo. I mean, because I believe that it was Robbie, uh, uh, is it Trevino, Trevino that was, uh, he was one of the models, I believe. And I don't, it, I think he was there. He was just there. He's just hanging. Yeah. He wasn't one of the models, but he was just there for some reason. I don't know why he was probably just. I gotta, I gotta say, you're like one of the cool kids of Magic, aren't you? Because like I see your photos and it's like you guys are always hanging out together. You got your posse of like Magic artists. You guys just seem cool. Like it just, oh, well, you're cool. I don't know if I'm cool, but um, I'm very oh. extroverted. So it's easy for me to meet people. I think right. you're cool. I think you are cool. I think it's sort of just like you just, you, you kind of ex- embrace it, embrace the chicness. You know what I'm saying? I'm like the cool goth kid, I guess. Yeah. Like yeah. I was like very goth in high school but extroverted at the same time, like very friendly. Does music ever play into your art? Nope, there's my dog. It's really important to me. Like, you know, I'll kind of listen to music super loud while I'm painting or something. And, uh, you know, it really gets like the mood going. Like if I'm, if I'm uh, painting a piece of, you know, something really scary, I'll listen to some nine inch nails. If I'm painting something fun, I'll listen to pop music. Like it, it, it gets you in the mood, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, so what what do you think made you decide? Now I just this is kind of a like a curious question, but you did the um you did the uh the the, the different signs for the calendar for and I I Llewellyn, Llewellyn, I Llewellyn, yeah. Llewellyn, okay, sorry. I bought I butchered that one. For Libra, and this I'm only curious about this because I am a Libra. Uh, it's what? interesting you chose female because it is the one sign that is not assigned a gender in the whole like uh in the whole spectrum of them and i was just curious what what like how do you pick a model for say something as as um, you know know, i i know this probably doesn't come across but that's a a trans model huh they identify as female oh so you were onto it you kind of you were like you're already there okay that's interesting see as i was going to say like you I, I, you, you seemed like somebody who would be well researched, but I was also interested to know what the decision was behind it. But you know, that's cool. That's cool. You, and so, honestly, it's just this particular model. I think is really beautiful, and I wanted to use her face. Oh, I'm not arguing. I'll, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't think there's. I mean, there's not even. They're just. There. You pick beautiful people, and not in the sense that like it's you know like, and and I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. I just mean like they're arresting to look at. Oh yeah, I mean, really beautiful person. And um, for your job that you now for like say for like the job the, or the painting that you did for Ravager is that Mark? Is that your husband for the Lord of the Rings? For Ravager? Oh yeah, that's Mark. Yeah. So how did you th- go into a little bit about how you guys met? Because that's that's a really interesting uh, dynamic you have going. I mean, you'd think that being with somebody who does the exact same thing that you do might either be completely disastrous or in what it seems with you guys, uh, really just a great synergy. So how'd you guys meet and kind of go from, from So that? I moved to Arizona and I didn't 
know anyone. So I looked for some drawing groups and, you know, I found some meetup group where people just got together and were drawing and I met Mark and he happened to live like four minutes away from me. So we just started hanging out and it turned out we just had a lot in common and there weren't a lot of fantasy artists. I think at that time, Howard Lyon was living in Arizona and that's about it. Carmen Sinek, I think was living there too. And, but otherwise like it, in that particular area over by Phoenix, like it's, there's just not as much um, gaming industry like up here in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Here in Seattle, there's just so many people that do this type of work. Yeah, it's a hub up there. Huge hub. And so were you guys already married when he got the, the his first job with Magic or was how did no. that work? Well, I guess he must have gotten his first job with Magic like the month we met. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and so, I didn't know much about magic at the time. I was making a concept art portfolio. And so you guys then moved to Seattle and then you you got in with it as well. And uh, then you uh, right now you're a production designer manager at Hidden Path Entertainment. Yes. So what is that? What is the what does that entail? So I run the concept and illustration for a um, open world Dungeons and Dragons game that's in production. Really? That's Mm -hmm. cool. That's really cool. And when is that projected to come out? I can't say anything about Uh, anything. I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, I gotcha. Uh, All I can say is it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. It was, I'm like a non-disclosure agreement, but then in my head, I'm like, I almost was like NDR. And then I was like, wait, no, that's not right. (laughs) And then I'm like DNR. Nope. Nope. That's do not resuscitate. Uh, oh brain fart, brain fart. <laughs> it looks like from behind you, that's your, your Tropa painting in the background. Isn't yeah. It? You know, I have to, um, I have to edit a couple things on it. I'm thinking about maybe selling it just to make some room. It's gorgeous. It's, it's oh, really you. cool. I mean, I love it. I just, uh, it's, I don't know what it is, but I, I think I, just, I like the, the, the way you mix blues and browns and there's I see that recurring in a lot of your work you you do have an affinity and a really good way of mixing blue and brown on like especially with people's skin tones versus like the way they dress I I like it because you don't ordinarily think of blue and brown as a good color you know that might be like I use a I tend to use like a light source that is a really cool light source so the shadows are a bit warmer so Ah, that's what you're referring to that's interesting that's interesting so then I was curious about what, what was crab jab? You posted some stuff about crab jab. What, what was that? So that used to be uh, an art gallery here in Seattle that Julie Barrow, who is, you know, a a magic artist actually from back in the day, she ran it and it was such a really fun place. They would do gallery shows and, you know, you could see a lot of Brahms there and, you know, all kinds of like fantasy art. And it's just such a good time. I miss that place because it was beautiful art. So I did a gallery show with Cynthia Shepard where we just kind of explored like the darker aspects of our like fine art. And it was a lot of fun. I really miss that. Um, what would be your favorite piece from that set of, of drawings or paintings that you did? You know, actually uh, the drawings that I did, I really enjoyed because I, I had never been much of a drafts person before, which means just, you know, um, drawing. I'm more of a painter. Like I blob on paint as opposed to like drawing. So I enjoyed that quite a bit because it was different for me. When you got the news that, or I, I, did you get the news prior to that you were going to be designing a commander for the new commander set? Which one do you mean? Or is it, I'm sorry, it was silver. Cool. I guess, no, it's like a legendary, oh, not legendary. Yes. Um, but it was, am I, I might've been mistaken. It's not included in the new 2021 set or was it? I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't been keeping up as much just because I've been so busy lately, but I do know that, um, I knew it was a special character, but I didn't know much about that otherwise. Was that one digital or was that one traditional? I was digital. That one was probably my, the last magic card that I've painted. And um, I might've taken on a little too much work. I painted that one in a weekend. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, but I'm still happy with it considering. In a weekend, that's insane. I mean, and I, I don't mean that again, I mean more like that's that you could produce something that like quality. It was a tiring weekend, but I have a process that I can lean on. Right. Right. What's the process? 
what is that? What do you mean by that? You know, um, strong sketch, strong focus, you know, take really good reference. Yeah. Who would be a like painter or some painters or paintings that you think really kind of folded into the DNA of who you are as an artist today? Oh gosh, that's a really tough one. I really love Brahms work, really dark, mm. dark stuff. Um, let's see. Honestly, right these days, I'm liking a lot of like creepy abstract fine artists like mm -hmm. uh, that do a lot of portraiture, like Hendrik Oldelin, I really like. Um, just a lot of really dark portraiture. Like I'm almost, I, I love fantasy art, but I'm compartmentalizing it. Like I really love like very dramatic, like abstract portraits. I would be curious to see what you could do with sort of a horror influence. You know what I mean? I mean, that's kind of like my aesthetic. I love horror video games and all of that. So, you know, honestly, I'll probably do a lot more of that work in my free time. Mm -hmm. It's funny because my magic art like can be very um, color saturated quite a bit and very optimistic and pretty. But like, you know, if you um, if I were to do personal work, it would be much darker. Right. Interesting. And um, I feel, I mean, at least there is, I know that there's not a way you can discuss it, but hopefully there's some ways that you were, were able to utilize that in upcoming sets because they do have some darker ones coming up. Um, are you currently working on anything for Magic at the moment? I am currently not. Currently not. Not because I don't want to, but because I don't have a lot of time, but yeah, I will but at some point. Yeah. I mean, you, you're, you're in, you know, a new mom uh, twice over now and it, it's, that's a lot and you're you know you're doing the dungeons or dungeons and dragons project and it seems like you're able to spin plates like no other uh it's a very very busy schedule for me um is there anything else that you have going on that you would like to talk about as far as projects go anything that you can talk about oh gosh i mean honestly i don't have a lot of time for anything right now so you know, maybe in the future, I think I want to do some, play with some photography, do some more fine art. You know, if I take another magic card this year, it's definitely going to be an oil because I really enjoy doing that. Um, and um, were you able to experience any of the uh, the uh, sort of fan interactions that that before, you know, obviously before the big C word happened, not that C word, the other C, um, before that happened, you know, were you able to be able to get in front of people and meet people and sign works and stuff like that? You know, I, I went to like a, a GP Phoenix and it was a pretty quiet show, but it was really fun. I like talking to, I like talking to fans, like about what they like in the artwork and what they're playing. Like, I just really enjoy interaction. So I, I would like more of that after COVID, you know, um, mm -hmm. I've also gone to a few conventions, just helping out like my husband and my friend Tyler and interacting with their fans. And it's always been a great time. Do you ever see the possibility, because I know in the past there have been some artists who have uh, like doubled up together on cards. Like, is that something you could see yourself doing with Mark or, or with Tyler? Or is there ever a chance for that? Definitely not with my husband. I think Why? we like to keep things separate. Okay, okay. Um, We're both just, very strong-willed people. Right, I okay. Keep off each other. But I mean, it's not like I'm against it. I just can't really... It's hard to match up schedules, I suppose. Ah, okay. I, I think gotcha. it would be more fine art, if anything. Right, because that's more that's more something that would be uh, like with lo it's looser and it's not going to pin you yeah. down with the way that, that an assignment would. Exactly. All right. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much again for the time. I, I know you're super busy, so I will let you go. But I appreciate thank you taking you. the time to talk to me today. It was a pleasure to meet you. I appreciate nice. it. Yes, great to talk to you too. Well, that's all for now. I'm due on the runway. Anna Wintour is one of my best friends. There is not a September issue in print that has not been run by this vampire. My tastes are pure, unadulterated, super nature. So until next time, I got a vogue. I mean, scoop.